cyclists. Ah. If there ever was a thorn in the side of a tractor, it's a cyclist. Sir. Sir. We'll have the discovery back. Uh, in the end, we get away with some plastic welding. Uh, JLS, Jameson Land Rover Services, pulled me out of a hole, fixed it within uh, 48 hours of starting it. The bill for that was £231, of which there was £70 of plastic welding and £122 of uh, labour and cheaper than a whole new replacement manifold, quicker, uh, let's hope it lasts, it'll be interesting to see because the last replacement hasn't given any trouble, it's the other inlet manifold that's popped this time. But today we are going to cart some silage with uh, Gavin McKnight, so let's get on it. So our grass. And I have the most ridiculous sense of guilt. The reason is I've spent the last nine years of my life, the first cut, chasing days like this, chasing crews with the camera. And because I'm not filming today, I just feel this enormous sense of guilt that I'm wasting an opportunity. The weather has been sort of unpredictable. Uh, next week's forecast is horrendous, so a lot of people are moving now that like even Alan's shaping to cut his grass. Um, they probably would have left for another week. And we're hoping to get down to the Republic of Ireland. I should have been away, you know, as the weather turned in my favour. And then because Gavin asked me to cart grass, and this is the first day he's asked me to cart grass, he's my neighbour. He's the one most likely to give me the call. I uh, I didn't want to say no on the first day. Because that wouldn't bode well for getting asked again. If you said no, your reputation would start to precede you for never being available. So it's a hill like this where this thing pulls like a train. We're doing 15 miles an hour. We're still on the pole. We're still accelerating. Seventeen, the eighteen, they're about two thousand RPM. Give it the last gear. It's just still balling, still balling. I did notice that I was watching the temperature gauge on the last go up this hill. We're one bar from entering the red zone. Again, this is all new to me. This machine, every machine has its own kind of things that it does with the gauges, there's no, there's no consistency to them. So it's finding where my normal sweet spot is, um, but that is a paint ball, like and she is tramping all the way Oh, I hit that bump. I hit that bump every time. So we're doing 23 there, up that hill, full load. So I'm not sure how many chillers are on today there. Calvin stopped to get out and look at his new Holland, surprisingly, but isn't taking 19th gear. 
don't know what's wrong with that. Uh, that's the first time I've seen his, his case in the field. So I'm guessing the New Holland case thing is getting a bit grey because when I first met Gavin, like die hard New Holland man, not a John Deere in the yard. Now he is probably got as many if not more John Deere's. I think it's the John Deere's on the mowers. C2 of his fleet card in the day, and he's got a case in a new haul, so he's probably around the 50 50 split now. The John Deere influence is creeping forward. He's probably one of the few men I know that doesn't have a, uh, a vent in the yard. Most people, most big contractors, sort of have the one event for whether it's the bone job or the or the you know drilling job or whatever they just that field work they're they're popular for the men that can afford them but this is one of these roads where it's got a white line in the middle and technically it's wide enough for two vehicles but there's the odd place where the poles and the trees stick out and if you've met a truck or an other side of the on it. Just at that point, it would not be good. for the day. If it had been one day wider, I'd have been driving in and turning on. So, the one thing I was always taught was you go as hard as you like in the road, but you lose all your time in the pit. So in a tighter yard, if you end up taking a shot or messing about trying to reverse in, you have to get her first time every time, because that's where you're losing your time at. So. Long haul, the load's sticking on her. Well packed with all the bouncing and all the miles. Waiting on a wreck, man. And there's Mr. Model Farmer coming to fly in. So it looks like I'm in the front of a four cheddar queue. Thanks for stopping, Gavin, and sent me out as the first load. I hit me as the first load because you're setting the pace for everybody else. I'd much rather be chasing boys down and trying to pull away because I'm not in a 40, uh, 50k tractor, I'm in a 40k tractor. Our set of triples in the go up in there. I think that's the third or fourth set of triples I've seen today. There is a lot of grass going down today. So I would think we'll cruise will be down a few dead nights before the weekend because there is a wet, wet forecast. It's quite surprising that 
some cars are terrified when they meet a tractor. Like terrified, you can see them ditching it half a mile away. But most are just on a, on a mission to get from A to B. And all they see you as is an obstacle, which must be overcome at all costs. So, cars aren't always the friendliest. But, they like the food that they eat, the milk at the table that will be coming off the dairy of the farm where the city's going in. If you wanted to get a Brian, you could get an episode if you had a bit of help. Well, if you can get someone to help you, you'd take them with you, is what I'm saying. Alright, well, like, it's your call. I just, I feel guilty I'm cartoonish and not a way video in the day. That's all wrong with me. <laughs> so. You and Johnny go to that, will you? Alright, Brown wants me to guard tomorrow for him, so. But I can do I can do Freddy Saturday no more. Alright, perfect. Dead on! This is what I didn't want. I didn't want to be the lead man. Now, what? You know, four trailers in the field with a harvester. It was all caused by the new hull. Like, the other day, it's caused by the new hull. You know? He should have been away at the gate in front of me the last time. Sure. I love a good bouncy name. It makes my day. 